Uh, good afternoon. I'm Bucks County District Attorney Matt Weintraub, and today I'm here to announce uh, criminal charges in the arrest of Christopher George Gilly, 61 years old, of Dunmore in Lackawanna County. Uh, we've charged him with criminal homicide and attempted criminal homicide of Julius Drellick, 81 years old, who is deceased, and his wife Phyllis Drellick, 85 years old, who survived. We've also charged him with aggravated arson, persons not to possess a firearm, burglary, and related offenses for an incident that occurred very early this morning at 5777 Private Drive in Buckingham Township. He has since been arraigned uh, early this morning as well and was sent to Bucks County Correctional Facility on a no bail status. I'm gonna give you a summary of the facts of the case. We had a dwelling fire called in. It was reported at 3.07 a.m. this early this morning at the 5700 block of Private Drive in Buckingham. Further information indicated that two elderly residents were, per, were potentially trapped inside that burning residence. Phyllis Drellick managed to get out of this house. This is where she lived, but her husband did not make it. Julius Drellick was pronounced dead at the scene. Phyllis Drellick miraculously didn't suffer any injuries. Both the Drellicks used a chairlift to get up and down the stairs. The fire knocked out the electricity in the home, so Julius Drellick was unable to use the lift to get down from the upstairs bedroom where he was sleeping for the night. Our investigation of the fire showed five or six points of origin, including at the exits to the home. Our investigation, which was done incredibly quickly and expediently, thoroughly and professionally by some of the professionals you see arrayed behind me, as well as others, and I'll tell you who they were, and detected an accelerant, was detected by a canine in three areas of the family room located on the east side of the building. As you know, an accelerant is something that can be used to make sure that a fire burns more intensely and quickly. Fire Marshal Rob Sponheimer determined that the fire cause was incendiary in nature. Surveillance footage nearby showed a light colored SUV traveling up the driveway towards 5777 Private Drive at about 2.04 a.m. and leaving the home at 2.53 a.m. We found Coors Light beer cans in the back, on the back patio and on the side of the road by the house. The Drellick's daughter, actually Mrs. Drellick's daughter, owns a vehicle that matched the description of the one seen going into the driveway. Christopher Gilly, who lives with Mrs. Drellick's daughter, was driving that daughter's SUV when he was stopped in Dunmore in Lackawanna County hours after the fire. I should point out that this is two hours away. A strong odor of gasoline was coming from Gilly, was observed by a police officer who stopped him, and a lighter was visible on the passenger seat of that vehicle. Gilly was intoxicated at the time he was stopped and was seen drinking Coors Light hours before the fire. Gilly was also found to have the house keys to the Drellick's home in his pocket and an older style rifle in the rear seat of the vehicle he was found driving. The rifle was positively identified as belonging to the Drellick's and had been hanging above their fireplace mantle in the same room where the canine detected accelerants. We have done an autopsy, or our coroner has done an autopsy of Julius Drellick, and the cause of death is smoke and soot inhalation and thermal burns. I have many, many investigating agencies to thank, and they include Bucks County District Attorney's Office Detectives, Buckingham Township Police Department, the Bucks County Fire Marshal, Buckingham Township Fire Marshal, Bristol Township Fire Marshal, Ben Salem Township Fire Marshal, the Philadelphia Fire Marshal, 
the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, the Dunmore Police Department were of particularly great assistance to us in this investigation and were paramount in enabling us to bring this case to a speedy investigative conclusion. The Solbury Township Police Department, the Midway Fire Company, and the Bucks County Coroner's Office were all instrumental in this, bringing this case to a swift and speedy resolution. Deputy District Attorney Mark Ferber and District Attorney Brittany Kern will be prosecuting this case on our behalf and on behalf of the people of Bucks County. When I think about this case, and I've only been living with this case for a few hours now, I can't stop thinking about that chairlift frozen in place in the middle of the stairs by this intentionally set fire. The defendant's intentional fire caused the electrical short to the chairlift just after Mrs. Drellick used it to escape this fire miraculously unharmed. But this same electrical fire, the same fire prevented Mr. Drellick from doing the same thing and he paid with his life. I cannot imagine the terror that they both must have felt as they were separated by that fire, now forever. Because of this and because of his intentional actions, we've investigated and arrested defendant Christopher Gilley for causing Mr. Drellick's death and related offenses. Now we have to finish our job and get justice for the Drellicks and for our community. I'll take some questions if you have them. Why does he do this? What does he tell you? Does he tell you what was on it? Uh, Jeff, we have, um, we have some ideas about motive. As you know, motive is not required to, to charge an offense, somebody criminally with an offense. I believe that those motives will be developed further as the investigation continues. At this point, we were satisfied that we have an, enough probable cause to arrest Mr. Gilley for these awful acts, but motive will be something that we'll continue to pursue. Can you give us the nature of the public relationship between Christopher Gilley and Lisa King? Was he just kind of living as a tenant, or were they dating? Or? Uh, that, uh, I think fair assumptions could be drawn there, Walter, uh, that they were more than acquaintances, they were more than roommates, uh, but we need to develop that a little further. But all four of these people knew each other, certainly. Have you been to this house before? Any evidence that he had been there before? Any the layout? You know, his previous crimes were in the Scranton area. Why drive all the way here? We um, we don't have any police contacts that indicate th that there were there were police problems between these people at that residence. But we have a pretty clear indication uh, that he had been present at that residence before. In, in other words, he had visited it. Not on friendlier terms, he was welcome into the house at some point. Is that safe to say? Yes, he had been there on a, on legal on legal, and I guess if you would put friendly in quotes on friendly terms in the past, uh, I would not characterize all of their relationships as friendly, but that remains to be developed. So, if he had a rifle from inside the house, is it fair to assume that he was walking around inside the house before setting the fire while they were asleep upstairs? Yes, that's a fair assumption. That's a, an assumption that we're making as well. Has the daughter indicated to you that she was uh, estranged from him? That they had argued? She obviously had talked to her. What what? Uh, Mrs. Drellick's daughter is cooperative with us, and I don't want to say much more about uh, the, the comments that she's made on the record, but that will be revealed certainly in court. Do you expect anyone else to be charged in this? No, I don't. I expect that our charges are complete at this time. You mentioned the previous arrest for fire in 2013. Is there anything else on the rap sheet? Well, um, as you know, when we allege a, a charge of a certain person not to and able to possess a firearm, that does give us some license to talk about a person's prior record because we have to prove that in court. Uh, I'm not really allowed to comment on whether or not Mr. Gilley may have additional convictions. If we were looking at a court docket that suggested that he had been arrested in 2012, 2013, and was supposed to have been sentenced for eight years in prison and may have been released in the last two years, would we be wrong in taking this information out there? 
I think all, I think all the court documentation that you see, as long as you're getting it from legitimate sources, would be accurate. I just can't comment on that. Did he just use gasoline? Did he bring a little gasoline or set the fires? It seems so. Uh, I, I, I'm not a technical expert, but it's, that's what it's been relayed to me at this point, yes. So he has a prior offense that bans him for possession of a gun. He's got a prior felony that says uh, he can't can hold a gun? Yes, and actually I think that is enumerated in the probable cause affidavit as a prior arson. Prior arson, I bet. Any indication he knew the home was occupied? Our allegation is that this is a murder, so yes. Did he break into the home? Uh, a break-in is not required. Uh, I believe if you look at the probable cause affidavit, he was found with the key to the home, which uh, he could have gotten uh, even if by illegal means. How crucial was that security video that showed the car going and leaving? That was very important for us to help. Uh, it was one of the critical building blocks of our probable cause. So. As always, we, we can, uh, our community can help us be our best protectors. If you have security and the police are asking for it, please come forward and let us know that was critical in this case. You mentioned earlier, Matt, that they didn't always have a friendly relationship, I assume, meaning Gilly and, and the relics. Any other information? I mean, I assume you're getting that from the daughter. Was there any contention there or fights there previously? Uh, I'll put it this way. We've developed some other evidence that would suggest otherwise. I don't want to cast aspersions. I think the evidence will be pretty concretely presented either at the preliminary hearing, certainly in discovery and at trial. That'll show the nature of their uh, relationship. Who prompts the cop to pull him over? That's a great question. I'd like to correct one thing on the record. I mentioned that the fire was early this morning. It was early yesterday morning. So it was early Sunday morning. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I appreciate the coroner correcting me on that. But let me, uh, well, let me just try to answer the question. So once the police get, had gained information about the, uh, the type of car that was being used because Mrs. Jellick's daughter had reported it missing, we were able to put out a be on the lookout for that car. And then a, a very alert police officer up in Dunmore in Lackawanna County spotted the car and pulled it over and made the observations that he made. Do you know anything more about the victim and his wife? Well, we certainly. A long time or in Bucks County? Um, I know that they've, uh, I think a court, one second please. They've been residents at that, at least he's been resident at that resident for a while. Yes. Yes. Okay. We know that that home there, that home has been on that street for a long, long time. And I believe Mr. Drellick has at least occupied that home for quite a while. Uh, I, don't, I don't know more about their personal history at this time. Thank you. Did and, the daughter know when she reported her car missing what the uh, Gilly was, was doing, where he was going? No, we don't have any indication of that, Matt. She has been very, very cooperative. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? All right, we'll leave these slides up for you. We'll make sure that we make them available for you uh, after the press conference is over. And we'll make sure you all get a copy of the complaint and probable cause. Thank you all very much. Have a good day.